Now the topic of this video today is just exactly how efficient is our building industry here in Australia. And whilst we've got uh, Elon and Trump doing it hard on Doge, uh, which is the Department of Government Efficiency, the question I'm going to ask today is with all these rules and regulations coming into the building industry, mainly to safeguard the consumer, how efficient is it? And is the issue of the National Construction Code every three years going to be a loss in efficiency? And is that something that we need to look at if we want to make the whole industry a lot more efficient? Well, you may ask, what is the National Construction Code all about? Well, I had to go and do a seminar a couple of weeks ago to learn about the National Construction Code. And I was really interested as to who actually writes all these codes, whether they knew what they were talking about, and whether the new codes actually make building easier and more efficient, or it actually makes it worse. So this is what the Master Builders Association presenter said about the people who actually put the codes together. This is the Australian Standards and the National Construction Code. Then there's what I said before, new version comes out, standard, you can adopt it in two years. With the NCC, you can update it in three new cycles. So they're trying to avoid that. The standards take years to write, put 20 blokes into a room, most of them are builders, most of them know everything and know else that's what we're talking about. They take two to three years to adjust. And they're not written just by theoretical people standards, a sit on standards committee. Standards committees are not. They're builders, sub ins, you do have some manufacturers, you do have some theoretical people, but generally it's trade builders that write these standards. So if I've heard him right, the National Construction Code is put together by practitioners, which kind of makes sense because you don't want rules and regulations being written by legal people who don't know what building is all about. Now the question is how up to date are these practitioners and are the rules that they are cobbling together relevant to the way we're building things nowadays and the way that we should be building things into the future. Now the National Construction Code encapsulates a whole lot of things to do with building and as a roofer I just want to have a look at the issues with roofing. And because my specialty is in roofing, I can only comment on roofing issues. And when I look at what's in the code, I can see obviously that a lot of what's in the code is not relevant to what we are doing nowadays. And in fact, some of it is in fact blatantly wrong. So as an example, we'll look at the topic of end lapping. And that's where the, you've got a roof where the roof is too long and you can't do it in a single length of roof sheeting and you've got to have to do it in multiple lengths and the lengths are lapped in what they call an end lap. So we'll look at this particular situation, we'll look at what the code says and we'll look at what the manufacturers say about end lapping and we can see that both the code and the manufacturer's recommendations are indeed wrong and they really should be updated. Now I know for certain that most builders don't know what roofing is all about. You really need an expert roofer to be able to understand the intricacies of roofing. So with end lapping I can see that the writers of the code have just gone and pulled out of the manufacturer's installation recommendations and used that in the code. So we'll look at the LifeSite installation code for roofing as far as the end lapping goes and their installation manual have changed over the years and we'll see that there's the 2017 version and now that we've got the 2024 version and the two versions are different. And I think that because the builders just don't understand the first principles of roofing, they have cobbled together some old information from the manufacturer's installation manuals, pulled it into the code and
and they've in fact written the code incorrectly because the code refers to how you end lap and it refers to a diagram but the diagram doesn't reflect the words that's in the code and what makes it worse is that the current version of the LifeSight installation manual, the 2024 manual, in fact leaves a diagram that is incorrect in the manual and that's the diagram that Ruthless should be looking at and the diagram is in fact incorrect. So the trick in end lapping is that you must lay all the sheets on the bottom row before you start on the next row. In other words, you are not laying the bottom sheet on the run and then the top sheet on the same run before you go on to the next sheet which is shown incorrectly in the code and in the installation manual and I've got a little video at the end to show you exactly why you don't do that because it will cause leaks so rather than doing one sheet and the next sheet on the same run and then proceed across the roof you should go the bottom sheets all the way across the roof before you proceed on the next sheet high up the roof and then go across the roof and then you continue. This particular roof has got a lap in it. Um, there's another lap further down the bottom and in the old days the sheets just weren't long enough to have a continuous sheet so um, people were forced to do a lap. Now there's a correct way and an incorrect way of doing laps on a corrugated roof profile. This particular roof is leaking and um, it's uh, mainly due to the fact that the lap wasn't done correctly. Uh, it was just um, done um, in such a way that it uh, attracted water into the roof cavity. So let's have a look, we'll open this up and see how the lap's been done. It's your lap there. We'll get that opened, right, and that's what it looks like. There's been sealant put there. Now, if this lap was done correctly, that sheet there should be under this sheet. But uh, this has been lapped in such a way that uh, this bottom sheet has been placed on top of the upstream sheet. and what happens here is that you see all that uh, water gets trapped in there and uh, it actually has a bit of a, a damming effect because a bit of dirt gets in there water uh, flows down this lap and then it runs over and you can see the insulation uh, has been damped over time um, and so it's been leaking uh, at this point so this is uh, just Let's have a look at what's down there. You can see, here we are. Um, so, a fair amount of dirt that gets built up, and um, subsequently, water gets into the cavity space. So, um, you can get a much better result if the sheets were lapped properly. We uh, nowadays don't recommend. Um, having all these laps because we can get sheets in continuous length um, but where we're forced to put a lap in we just need to make sure it's done correctly we're going to look at where we should put the silicon line um, I've always said that the silicon line should go on the screw line so I'm just looking at the panel around there but on second thoughts uh, we've had a lot of experience with condensation and we decided now that the silicon line should run up right up the end of the roof sheet and the reason is that if you have the silicon line on the screw line right here you'll have this much of the roof sheet exposed and when you do get condensation you'll have water sitting there not being able to be released so you'll have a wet spot in there, and that will uh, mean that you've got premature rust happening on the upstream end. So you should always silicon right on the top edge, so you don't have that condensation problem. So once you've screwed this down, there's a little bit of a gap, and any moisture that gets in there will eventually drain out. So the silicon line should always be at the end of the sheet. So 
the easiest way to think about all this is lay your bottom first, then lay the next layer on top of that. Don't try to stagger or do anything fancy. It's just lay one section and then the other section on top. And then you'll have the laps working, the water from uh, the under lap will keep running all the way down here and run through. Uh, from here, it'll keep running through and you don't have a problem of water trying to get in underneath. So that's a trick in, uh, in end lapping of a corrugated roof. You lay the bottom first, then you lay the next layer on top, and the silicon line should always be the end of the sheet. So if you don't understand how a roof sheet works when water runs down the sheet, you will not be able to appreciate the fact that you should not lay one sheet, the next sheet on the same run, and continue across the roof. It should be all along the bottom row, and then the next row up higher the roof, and so on and so forth simply because the water doesn't shed effectively if you don't lay the end lap correctly. So that's just one example of many examples that I can show you in the code and in the manual that is not reflective of best practice at the moment, the stuff we do at the moment. And the question is, how efficient are we? Who writes the rules? And what do we do about it? So do we find an Australian Elon Musk and we have a Doge department here in Australia so that we can fix all these inefficiencies? What do you think?